Dr. Feuilleton, um, very well put, I think, by the senator, bearing in mind um, his position. Uh, he has to be a statesman, has to be a nationalist. Uh, he, 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 didn't, uh, he, he didn't talk about uh, uh, alleged uh, Fulani herdsman uh, involvement in, in the mix, complicating whole matters. Stayed with identity and um, you know, misunderstandings around that. But as you know, it is alleged that there also are marauding Fulanis creating a lot of the problem there. Um, look, Tony, give me your, 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 your idea, your thoughts on the situation in Benue. And as I said at the very, very top, the most important thing is how do we stop it? Well, if we don't get to the base, to the root of it, it might be difficult to stop. So what do you think, Tony? I think I will just go with how do we stop it? Um, um, without prejudice to blame game causes and all those. In as much as it is important for us to know the root cause and causes of um, some of these crises, but the fact remains that some of the causes are in public domain. And um, many a times we have severally advocated for a political will to be able to solve all this. Thank God we have a new government. And from the signature of what we have seen so far, uh, there seems to be a high level of seriousness. We are expecting a different narrative in terms of um, security solution under this government. But having said so, I think one of the things that we want to strongly advocate, um, uh, not just in Plateau State, but all over the country, is for the government to look at um, you know, the possibility of having a special intervention project uh, in the form of um, a rural security uh, force. Uh, basically, as we speak today now, uh, we all know that we need to approach it kinetically and non-kinetically. Um, the non-kinetic approach, yes, we talk about advocacy, you talk about, uh, you know, uh, orientation and reorientation, training, uh, talking about uh, community, uh, trying to conflict resolution and the like. But the fact remains that there are see some of them that are um, non-recalcitrant. They are just not ready. Uh, to, they are just not ready to listen. They are just not ready for anything called uh, negotiation and all those stuff like that. Now, if, if the government is able to have a special team, uh, it's an intervention team. It needn't be a permanent one. It's a an intervention thing because even when you come to neg the negotiation table or you come to the issue of um, trying to talk about conflict resolution and the like, there must be somebody who is who has gained upper hand, and it is the person that has gained upper hand that dictate the pace of any negotiation, of any discussion, of <laughs> any meeting, of any resolution, of any conflict resolution in any way whatsoever. So as we speak today, now. From what I've seen in Plateau State, there have been several meetings, there have been several resolution attempts, even governors, president have intervened and the like. Now, why is this, why is this subsisting? Is because government has not stand its ground and government has not taken the bold step to make example out of those that are causing mayhem. It's not an excuse that, um, you know, your cattle was uh, rustled and that becomes an excuse for you to do what? To attack community. It's not an excuse that, okay, your farm was destroyed. That's an excuse for you to keep people's cow. So if government had not been able to take that decisive decision to make examples of some of these things, I, I think this thing may continue. Another thing is that, uh, you see, while, while, while I was advocating for forest security force, it's, uh, yes, forest security force, it's basically because that is their point of urbanization. That is where they train. That's where they keep their supplies and logistics and all those places, things like that. That is where you talk about the hideout of criminals, criminals, kidnapped victims and the like. Now, if the government is able to have a special intervention force, now it's going to be drawn out of all the military forces. I mean, Navy, Air Force, NSCDC and the like. Draw all of them together, give them special training on forest guards forest security. Now it's going to also be a proactive one. You are not going to wait until a village is attacked. 
You identify the hard out of these places. You are well armed and you are well kitted in such a manner that you have the, for, you have the support of the, of the Air Force for area surveillance and area attack. You have the support of the military too. You have the support of the NSCDC and the Customs. Now it becomes a special force on its own. And what their responsibility does not have anything to do in the cities at all. Mm. At all. They don't have any, in short, their camp, their stations, their offices are in the forest, so to say. If the Boko Harams, if the headsmen, if these criminals can stay in the forest, I think the military can do better than that. So as far as I'm concerned, the mountains are their hideouts. The caves are their hideouts. The forests are their hideouts. Now we are talking about security in the city. Leave it to the police. Leave it to conventional security forces and the like. Now have a special force. I'm not saying that. Now the regular security team do their normal work. But this one is a special intervention force. Mm -hmm. It is imperative as we speak now. Because if you talk about the non-kinetic approach, you want to bring them on the table and the like. And what, if you invite them, they didn't come. What will you do? But if you have been able to establish your authority, mm -hmm. your might, and your ability to do and undo, if you invite them, they will come. Just let me flash you back to the era of uh, um, Obasanjo and then Yaradua. Precursor to, Oba, to Yaradua's takeover, you will remember that Obasanjo had dealt decisively with the Niger Delta boys to the extent that they could not leave the creek to even go and buy food in the city. It became a hell, a, hell, a hell on earth for them. They were hungry. They could, they, things were very bad for them. Now, when Yaradua came and said, gentlemen, let's talk amnesty, you saw the way they jumped at it. Why? Because federal government had been able to establish its authority that, look, if we are looking at you, it's because we just want to look at you as our children. As we speak today, as the government be able to establish its authority in its totality, the answer is, of course, no, especially in regions like Niger State, Southern Kaduna, Plateau State as a whole. Now look at these three states and Benue State. How many examples have the government been able to decisively bring out from those places? That's why we will look at a situation where we talk about the politicians, the village heads and the like, bring these people together, have meeting with them, look at the resolution like the senator said, a win-win approach. You have done this, don't do it again. You too, you have done this, don't do it again. That is at the city level, not the community level and all those. But at the level of the forest, there should be those that were able to say, if they have spoken with you, if they have pacified you, and you are still demonically possessed to the extent that you still want to go back to your vomit, then we are ready to deal with you decisively. Then it also means that the government must also bring in the traditional institution into it. Because if you are talking about forest security, you are talking about villages and mountains. There is no way the, the community, uh, the traditional rulers will not be involved. They know their forest. They know the gods. They know the prodigy of the gods and all those stuff like that. They know the mountains there. They know who approaches their forest. They have the hunters. They, all their order, the obas, the emirs, and the kings. Why don't you bring in these people and give them a role? that be, they become accountable. If there's any crisis in your community, forget about your throne. And at the same time, you also give them incentives to be able to do what? Make them do that work. It will reduce the workload on the security forces. What is the numerical strength of the security forces we are talking about as a whole? Mm. What is the, they are not up to two million mm. as uh, a whole. Well, let, let, me, let, me bring, let, let me bring this to the senator.